This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Let's talk about pediatric cataracts today. Dealing with a child's eye during surgery is very different. It's important for us to realize that the eye is not just a miniature version of an adult eye. The way the anticapsule behaves or the way the sclera behaves are so glaringly different from how an adult eye would behave. So in this case, we have a 10-year-old boy who has this white cataract. History of trauma about a month back. The parents are not sure how it happened. The child is vague in his uh, comments and doesn't remember exactly when he got hit. There's no evidence of any injury on the cornea. So let's begin the case. Uh, we have posted the child for cataract surgery, which is being performed under IV sedation and post septinous block. The incision is planned to counter the pre-existing astigmatism. In pediatric cataract surgery, in the back placement of the IOL is probably the most important thing to focus on and for that to achieve, we need to have a perfect rexus. So rexus is very critical in these uh, pediatric cataracts. After making the incisions, the anticapsule is stained and I'm using dispersive OVD to form the antechamber. As soon as the capsule is punctured, the fluid escapes out, compromising the visibility a bit. Please note that I am using a combination of tearing and shearing technique to control the tear uh, in this highly elastic anticapsule. I am aiming for a smaller rexus and that's the dictum to be followed. The characteristics of an elastic pediatric anticapsule is such that the opening turns out to be bigger than actually what we intended to have. Just a little bit over to flatten the capsule and an attempt to continue is made. The flap gets torn off. Now, gentle irrigation with BSS helps to flush out the liquid cortex and improves the visualization a bit. I go in with my bimanual INA to aspirate some of the cortex out. OVD is injected into the chamber before withdrawing the irrigation cannula with the goal to prevent the chamber from shallowing. Please note the position of the cannula which is injecting the OVD. It is placed towards the periphery so that the OVD uh, does not enter into the bag which could raise the intercapsular pressure and become problematic. I am using a forceps from the other side port to hold the flap and then the rexus creation is continued. A CCC, although small, is created. The remaining lens matter is aspirated quickly. The anti-capsule is just polished a little bit. Now I want to enlarge the rexus before putting in the lens. OVD is placed above the anticapsule on either side and I am using sodium hyaluronate to create and maintain space. Using a micro scissors, a tangential nick is given at the rexus margin. The flap is then held with the forceps and suddenly I can see the tear is heading towards the periphery. So I resort to the tearing technique where the capsule is pulled centripetally in a very brisk manner to prevent it from running away. So let's watch it again. As the elastic capsule is running away, the capsule is held flat and pulled in quickly centripetally. This maneuver actually saved the day for me. I'm implanting the planned lens into the bag. The rexus needs to be enlarged on the other quadrant. Tangential cut is given through the opposite side port. With the micro forceps, I am enlarging the opening and again I am using a combination of shearing technique and quickly shifting to tearing method if the situation demands. So we need to be alert when trying to enlarging maneuvers. So finally, I have a rexus of a decent size. 
it's covering the optic all around quite well so it's quite satisfactory to get this rexus even though it involved multiple stages the ovd both in front and behind the lens is removed to summarize this case was an excellent demonstration in understanding how elastic the anterior capsule in a child is it almost seems that the tear is so eager to run towards the equator it's important for us to understand this factor so the tips for performing a rexus in a child would be always aim for a smaller rexus than actually what you intend to have for example if we aim for a 5 mm rexus we should start off with the goal of having a 4 mm rexus because eventually we end up having a slightly bigger one good instrumentation is critical uh, in pediatric cataracts i always prefer to have a forceps over a cystitome and i would recheck whether the forceps is functioning well before inserting it into the eye good forceps are critical in grasping the thin capsule and also controlling the tear cohesive ovds make the job very easy and lastly the technique using the combination of sharing and resorting quickly to the tearing technique when necessary is very much mandatory in these highly elastic capsules so to conclude rexus is the most important step in cataract surgery more so in the pediatric cataracts so we need to plan appropriately and execute these plans well enough and it's not difficult at all in most cases thank you so much for watching and hope this helps